Hello, my friend Caleb. Hello, how are you? I'm very good. How are you? Not too bad. What's going on today? Uh, While well, recording a video with a very handsome guy, I don't, <laughs> don't want to get the butterfly. You must just going. be looking at the mirror right now. <laughs> I, I look in the mirror, I see your reflection in it. So, <laughs> so Caleb, uh, yes. today our topic of discussion is what is a romantic relationship? What is a romantic relationship? I think a romantic relationship is something that you have that at its core has to be beneficial for both people, obviously, no, no doubt about that. So I think the core tenets of what a relationship should be for a person is that one, it helps like you, you're built, you're helping improve your life with this person. This person is a positive addition onto your, onto your life. They are old, but they aren't the core reason why your life is better. They aren't the reason why your life is improving. They aren't the reason why you're getting to where you want to be. They should help make that trend. If you are still in that transition, if you're still in the process of evolving your life, maybe you're not quite happy. You're not quite where you want to be. They make that transition maybe a little sweeter, maybe a little nicer, but it, they're not the sole driving force of your motivation in life. So in most cultures, there is always a pressure on a younger person, anything past 20 and under 30, oh no. to get married, oh no. have children. Oh no. What do you mean? Because I'm 21. <laughs> do you feel the pressure? No. I, I think that, the con that uh, type of mindset is conducive to a person to become desperate in, in a search for a relationship and I feel that in the world we live in now there is a desperation for human contact but also at the same time there isn't a health the the most common way of human contact the most the most of the way that people meet each other now like I'm not saying for friendship I'm speaking uh, specifically on romantic uh, rendezvous I guess you could say but uh, the only uh, the, the most common and ready available outlet is usually through dating apps mm -hmm. so and the, that, that the, the reason why that's not good the reason why I don't personally agree with dating apps such as tinder and all that yeah tinder any they're all interchange interchangeable to me yeah. you just take one, replace it with the other. That's the exact same concept amongst all of them, right? Just swipe to the right for everything. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that that's the, the main issue is that it makes it so that there is no effort that has to be put into a relationship. It used to be that you would go somewhere you... I, I'm speaking as if I lived to... Yeah, right? yeah. I was, I, I'm pre growing no, up I in understand. that age, yeah. right? But it, the, the reason why this tinder this hook i guess you could call it hookup culture is not uh conductive to a good healthy relationship is because most people now are con are conditioned to the instant gratification of it it's you can pull out your phone you could go onto an app for girls it's a lot easier but still for guys it's a lot easier than if you didn't have tinder do, do you think it's easier for g all of the girls or just the good looking ones? Yeah, I think all of the girls. Why would you say that? If we want to get into the technicalities of it, it is shown that on those apps that if you're a woman, the algorithm is more specifically set to put you with more matches because on those apps, it's usually women are in higher demand than the men. Like women are going on there to look for women. Of course, there's the different sexualities, but when I'm speaking, I'm only talking about usually like men, woman, boyfriend, girlfriend type deal. So on on those apps, it's specifically tailored because women are more in demand than the men are. So if you were to go on tin Tinder, let's say, Tinder would see you as disposable because there are probably like there's probably 10 men to one woman on there so Sikander doesn't matter on tinder but this girl matters because her just her presence being on here is gonna bring how many guys now onto the app 
right? Because the more women there are on the app, the more the guys are going to be like, wait, all the girls are on there? No way. Let's go. <laughs> like, but at going back to what I was saying is that that's why it is not good for a healthy relationship. Because now people are are attuned to what I like to call instant gratification. You go on the app. You quite literally get a resume of the person. I guess you could put it in more dystopian sense. Is that it's literally a picture of the person with looking their best. They they're picking. They're not picking the pictures of them just out of bed like like that, right? Yeah, yeah. They have all their best hobbies, their favorite song, blah 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 blah, and you could be like that one or no, not that one. And you could go and do that until I, I, I don't know the intrig- intrinsics of it, but I know you can just do it uh, almost on the daily. So I think that builds up an atmosphere of not being like it doesn't really encourage you to be loyal to one person. Not loyal in the sense that you're going to cheat on them, but uh, disloyal in the sense that I guess a better word would be commitment. You're not willing to be committed to this one person. Because as soon as the good times end, well, why am I going to sit here and waste my time trying to build up a better life with you when I could just go on my phone and I could get all these potential girls and I could go and find another one to get my fill then? I think a big issue with modern day relationships is that people forgot about the concept of the honeymoon phase. The honeymoon phase, I'm sure everyone has heard of it and everyone is aware of it in some sort of vague concept, but that's what it is. It's, it's a new relationship. Humans are excited by new positive things in their life. If something positive and a relationship is tends to be a positive bonus in your life, if it's a new positive bonus, you're excited. You're like, wow, this is, I'm learning about this person. They're a new person in my life. I can't wait to do everything. This person's amazing, right? But you don't don't you think that before Tinder came in, um, if the girl was good looking, she already had enough prospects that she didn't need Tinder. As you said, there is only uh, about uh, there is only one girl to every ten guys on Tinder. Yeah, roughly. So. Roughly, and uh, um, so so in that case, if the good looking ones already have so much prospect. Uh, so many prospects that they don't need to apps like tinder yeah. uh, Then wouldn't it be the same thing like it was back in the day? So aren't we just blaming tinder for no good reason? I think it I, I understand where you're coming from But you also have to think that you're I feel like you're looking through tinder through the lens of people go on there for genuine relationship and I'm not saying that people don't but for the large majority of people on there, they're not going on there thinking they're going to find their wife. So let, let's say if a man is going to uh, only going on Tinder to uh, increase his notch count. Yeah. What do you think about that? Is Do you think uh, it, it, that his completely uh, his intentions are to just increase his notch count? Or does he actually look for someone to make his wife one day? I feel that the wife aspect of it probably falls more into the older crowd, whereas the younger crowd are probably going on there looking to increase the notch count. But for me, personally, I feel like this all falls back onto the concept of hookup culture in itself. Tinder, I think, is just like how you say, are we blaming for Tinder for no good reason? The reason I... I am so I'm so uh, I guess dead set on this is because Tinder has sort of become I guess the poster child or the mascot of hookup culture and probably would be better if we focused on hookup culture in itself as the main culprit for why I think relationships are on a decline for people and people don't know how to really handle relationships now because I don't think it's a, a secret that on, on the wide scale, anyway, most relationships are failing more and more and more often, right? And I think that does have something to do with how widespread hookup culture is 
and as a and just as an extension of that tinder because usually people are using that yeah like i said you could exchange it for any of them there's bumble there's blah 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 yeah so basically what you're saying is let's say for so if i see your perspective accurately you're saying if someone who has slept with more than 100 people um wouldn't find the 101st person as exciting anymore so there is no excitement left in being with one person yeah. when you can replace them in a heartbeat and That's move good. on to the next one and keep going through uh, multiple uh, honeymoon phases as they come yeah so i, I the, the issue with with uh with this as you're saying like they're not going to find that person as exciting they're not going to find any fulfillment from it i've spoken to many people who have had many hookups before and it's always the same ending it's never like oh yes it's fantastic it's i love doing it every single i love having it right even the men yeah I've, it's mainly men that i've spoken to okay every single time it always ends with it's lonely it's lonely there's no fulfillment in it i would much rather have genuine connection with somebody wouldn't they be able to make a genuine connection because if you've already slept with someone you're comfortable enough to present the offer of a relationship no, to them I, well it well you're also looking at it through the old the old lens of sex where uh, where most people see it now as just a mutually beneficial fun time whereas how i view it is it's not really something you just do with any like good looking person that you see wherever you are right why don't you see it that way because i see it as well you have to without getting into the gory specifics of what it really is in its essence it is probably the most intimate thing you could do with somebody that's true ever the, there's not much more you can do with a person that's more intimate than that act okay. and i feel like to get any sort of fulfillment out of it usually it's pr it's shown too from all the from all the people that i've talked to and i'm not just talking anecdotal it's shown too that people who do more have more hookups like just one night stands i guess you could say are more unhappy than the people who usually only have uh, only perform that act with like their girlfriend or their wife or something like that because the thing that elevates sex to another level is the fact that you have a genuine close very close bond with that person that you're with and the fact that we've torn down i guess that idea or that sensation and essentially made sex a commodity or a or a fun pastime between two willing participants. Yes, I believe you should have the freedom to do that. If you want to go have sex with a consenting person, you should have the freedom to do that. It's not going to be as beneficial. It's not going to make it's not going to be as fulfilling for you, but you can do it. That's how I view. So do you do you see it in a way that if they've um Gone, been uh, if the person's been on tinder or however they've hooked up with another person let's say let's say i i'm saying the hypothetical number of 100 people yeah. uh bef within in their 30s or uh, late 20s by the time they're late uh, in their late 20s they've already slept with 100 100 people hypothetically speaking yeah. do you believe that ruins the person there is no recovery as to going them going into marriage and being fulfilled uh, because since if they've if they've left uh, their uh, lifestyle of uh, gaining notch counts, now they want to settle down. Yeah. Do you think the uh, collection of notch counts above hundred uh, destroys the person beyond the point of repair? Like destroys their relationship or destroys them? Destroys them to be able to to make a relationship with a wife or a husband. I think given enough uh, self reflection and wherewithal of who you are as a person. I don't think it would because people have to remember that the feeling, the, the release that you get from sex is very addictive. So you can get that sort of addiction, that high from it. You look at, you can look at drug addicts, like to put it in a, some sort of comparison, 
you can look at drug addicts who used to be strung out for their entire lives. Let's say like coke or some sort of drug. They used to be strung out for their entire lives and then they decide one day, no, this is not how I want to live anymore. I don't want to be in down this shallow shell of a life anymore. I want to have something with genuine meaning. And then they are able to bounce back from it. It's obviously, it's hard. It's hard to work. It's not like, oh, I just don't want to do it anymore. You still have to put in some effort. You still have to show some sort of restraint. You have to give yourself some, some sort of effort. But I, I don't think that it's going to affect them as the person, no. If, I think, if anything, it will only benefit them. So what uh, so from uh, so if I uh, put this in perspective as to what you think that even after sl the sleeping with the hypothetical 100 people there is a chance of recovery they can leave tinder behind they could leave the addictive sex that they have with the new person every weekend or something and then move into the phase of marriage and live a fulfilled life yeah because I think the common the common driving force of all these people of what all they're doing why there's a, such a such a need for hookup call or not a need but there's such a uh, audience for it why there's so many participants in it why tinder is so rapidly evolving why every social media now has its own dating section of it like there's facebook dating there's in, i pretty i think there's instagram dating whatever why there's so many dating apps available is I is common uh, the common uh, issue is that people don't know how to deal with their loneliness people are lonelier now than ever in their entire lives and this isn't even just it isn't that strange it is more... because we have the most number of people in the world in this day and age and the most people we know um, there is a lot more people that are lonely than ever well because we have more people than ever in the world but we also have the least incentive to interact with them ever I mean you can essentially have everything that you could need necessity wise without ever having to communicate with another person face to face right and also on top of that because we're living in a world that doesn't really necessitates human contact people are growing like people are growing weary of it they like they're more used to not having human contact than they are having human contact but that's part of human nature is you want to have contact whether it's friendly social or romantic right and because people don't know how to cope with this loneliness they go for the quickest fix because that's how humans are that's how the brain is the brain doesn't want to go through the harder journey that's going to reap the most beneficial results humans and the brain are all about efficiency no matter how much you like to think that you're all about the process and the hard work if there's an easier quicker method to get you even a semblance of what you want your brain's going to idealize that i was watching a video about japan and lonely uh, people that are in Japan. Yeah. It was a very uh, interesting topic of discussion. We have, uh, we have lonely people here in North America, but uh, uh, the Japanese people, um, what what the lonely men uh, that lonely people that are shown in those uh, videos, are just another level. Do you oh, yeah. think that the possibility of that? happening in north america in the future is it possible like to a point where it's a epidemic to the point where epidemic like in a sense that uh, i saw a video that a japanese man was renting a japanese woman as a girlfriend so yeah. it was a service where he was renting a girlfriend yeah. and she was not a hooker no they did not sleep together uh, yeah. they only went out to have dinner and when I was watching there and when they clearly specified this is not for sex and this is not a prostitution, this is actually just going out and having someone to have dinner with. Have a, have a connection with. Yeah, and, and yeah. that business is booming yeah. all over Tokyo. And I'm just sitting there baffled watching this like, 
if they're not lying about sex right. yeah. and they're not because it's a, it's a legal business and it's uh, approved by the government and so they're uh, you, they're not lying and now uh, that makes me wonder what what on earth is going on and why or how do you see it i i can, i have heard of that too there's actually a name for them and it's called hikikomori hikikomori yeah. yes yes hikikomori yes so that i i can see that happening here in the sense that uh like i said the issue with people is that they don't know how to cope with their loneliness no one knows how to be alone People yeah, but see, there is a benefit. So that girl that agreed to go on a date with the guy for money, yeah, and and was not to sleep with him, um, went with him. She, uh, in an interview later on, she specified that she has some tricks to make her client happy. Yeah, and I, I, and I automatically assumed she's talking about some sort of a sexual tricks, which turned out to be no, they were not yeah. sexual tricks. She just smiles a lot and asks him a lot of questions about himself, yeah. and and I'm thinking like, what on earth is going on? Like, how could this man end up being that lonely that he agrees to be happy for a commercial smile? It's a commercial smile. It She's is. not it's, smiling. It's not a genuine connection. It's not a genuine connection. Like, how on earth did human beings get here? Because, well, like I said. People, if they don't know how to achieve something, rather than going through the arduous journey of getting to something such as something as real as genuine connection, if your brain looks for efficiency to get to something somewhat close. So a commercial smile is somewhat close to a genuine, it's no, is not the real thing at all, but how he wants is he just wants a smile. He, that like we're talking about this guy he just wants a connection whether it's genuine or it's paid for he just wants a single connection possible right so instead of going like breaking past that barrier of loneliness being able to sec be secure in himself and go out and meet somebody go through the trial and error the humiliation of the trial and error, right? The the humiliation of going up to a girl being like, hey, I really like you, and her being like, ah, right? Just without, without going through those trials and tribulations, looks for the efficiency. That's how the brain is. Well, why would I go through all that hard work when I could throw a couple bucks at this girl and she'll just do the same thing? So wouldn't the girl want the same thing? Why does she... Uh, choose to be in this sort of a business why does she not have a boyfriend she might uh, for a lot of those types of girls they already are in relationships so would you say that these are the better looking girls or prettier girls that are in this business and these men uh, would rather choose to get a commercial smile from a prettier woman than to go with a lesser looking woman to be their girlfriend I don't think it's anything to do with looks I think obviously there's the girls are going to have to be attractive for people to want to pay them to spend time with them, right? But I don't think it's, oh, I would rather pay this pretty girl to talk to me than spend time with a lesser looking girl. I think it's, like I said, instead of going through all of that, uh, that process of character development, of personal development, of going out to, the, to girls just in general, we're speaking from a man's perspective going out to girls in general and going through the I guess the the, the back and forth of asking a girl out no yes no yes no yes no all the ups and downs of that kind mind of, games right? yes yeah I guess yeah mind games right instead of putting up with that working past that and uh, pushing through it it's more so I don't know how to do this, so I would rather just pay the girl. Do you think that we have red-pilled men in North America, which means they refuse to get married or settle down with a woman? They would rather just live among themselves. Do you think these red-pilled men are a direction into becoming hakikomoris? Depends on how they view being by themselves. 
if you are content with it, if you see no issue with it, then yeah, then I don't think there's uh, any worry about a Hikikomori type incident. But a big common issue with these Hikikomori, uh, or I guess severe loners, is that usually they're complacent in it. Like they're not fine with it. They're not happy about it. They're just, well, this is reality. So I can't change it. This is just how my life is. Or they're severely depressed. You always look, they're always looking for some sort of outlet of human contact. Like they go as far as to get virtual uh, hologram girlfriends. Like they get these little projections of girls that'll be like they'll welcome them when they come home and say hi to them and talk to them and everything i think those are two different avenues if you are fine with being alone and you just don't want a relationship i don't see any issue with that it's just not your thing maybe you're not looking for it but if you are actively craving a, a relationship or something like that then it or not a relationship, even just, uh, not to go as extreme, just human contact in general, then you run that risk. Well, let's say in, in regards to relationships, uh, do you think that women have made um, men go into the type of thinking that they are going more and more men are joining the red pill community? I think the issue with relationships now like it's obviously multifactorial but ever like obviously with the hookup culture and everything like that but i think the downfall of relationships the centerpiece of it all is people don't know how to manage loneliness and the thing is is because we always attribute loneliness i'm sure even now you hearing it and people watching this whenever they hear loneliness they think negative they think sad sorrowful pitiful oh i'm alone i'm alone right loneliness is not a a uh, sad mental state it is a physical state of people around you or even a mental state of how you feel around people you can be alone if I go to my house right now, no one's there. I'm going to be there by myself. I am alone. I am technically lonely there. It, I don't think loneliness is objectively a bad thing. I think how you uh, manage yourself in loneliness can swing the pendulum towards negative or neutral positive, right? Is that but that's the issue is that people are on the negative end of the pendulum when it comes to their loneliness so you basically you're saying it has nothing to do with women doing something to red-pilled men do you think men have done something to women to create a sort of de uh, trust deficit that has brought us to this point where instead of wanting to be in relationships women want to be independent and men want to be hikikomoris I think it's because no one we're we're so obsessed with artificial self now we're so obsessed with image we're so obsessed with uh well is this going to benefit how people view me is am i going to through the relationship well through relationship just through people in general no one wants to look stupid in public no one wants to look dumb in public no one wants to uh risk being themselves if it's going to cause weird stares in public so what do you mean like if a, if a man uh, has a woman with him that whether has she does she have a trust deficit towards him and they get laughed about and their image gets damaged is that what you agree upon? I, I think what I mean is that uh, if I well people are afraid to be themselves in the fact that everyone's more obsessed with their image ra and rather than showing genuine self you can't have a relationship without the genuine self you can, it's not gonna really take you anywhere, but people are too afraid to show genuine self nowadays. That's why relationships fall. And that's what I mean by, uh, by that, is that out in public, people are way too afraid to be who they genuinely are. They want to fit in with what's 
go like with what everyone has deemed to be okay to act like. If you were talking about your relationship uh, in the past, yeah, um, tell tell me something about your relationship. What you learned from it? Um, how did you guys break up? And if anything, you want to discuss? So that actually, I think, has influenced how I've managed to be alone. So. I like a uh, background is my mom's a nurse. She worked night shift. So whenever I would be coming home from school, she would be leaving to work. Your ex girlfriend. No, my oh, mom. Your mother. My, my, <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. So, so she, my mom would be night shift. Yeah. She would be going to work when I get home from school uh, from around 5 30 p.m. till 7 in the morning. I'd be by myself completely alone in my house. Because it's only you and your mother that live in that house. Okay? Yeah. So, and this was back when I lived in Thunder Bay and this was still how it is now here. And you're 21 years old now. Nah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is how it was and that's how it is here. So I kind of had to get a gauge on being okay by myself. I like not sitting there like, oh, woe is me. There's no one around, blah, 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 right? But because I was very young when I was with my girl, I'm still young now, I'm not mm-hmm. saying like speaking like, hey, I'm 35, yeah. but that's still young too. Like, hey, I'm 62, so anything. Yes, yes. But because I was younger and more immature than I was now, I thought, oh, now I have a girlfriend. Now that's not gonna happen anymore. Oh, uh, being lonely is so stupid. Now I have this beautiful girl by my side. Now I don't have to be alone anymore. The, thi- the thing is, I was still treating the idea of being by myself as a negative. And I think after going through a relationship, one that did not end on a positive note, I learned to myself that sometimes it is better to just be by yourself and to put up, I guess, if at the very least, put up with yourself when you're by yourself, then to uh, stick in a, in a uh, draining relationship just because you're avoiding the prospect of having to go to bed by yourself. How did that relationship drain you if it did? So how it did was a, a big part of it was um, you the artificial self going back to that is I never felt like I could genuinely be who I was. The moment that I wanted to be who, who I am, it would, it would cause a conflict. It would cause a con, uh, some sort of fight to the point where it would just be like, Hey, I'm just uh, fine. I'm not, I won't do that. I won't, I won't behave like that. I won't say that blah, blah, blah. Right. It, it but it wasn't a, two-way street it was i wasn't allowed to be who i wanted to be but they can go and be do whatever they want right so so basically you were being controlled yeah okay yeah i wasn't really able to be my my authentic self and and it it was shown through my friends like after the relationship ended my friends said to me they're like it was crazy seeing you uh in that relationship and i was like how come they were like they're like you this guy actively censoring himself just to avoid a conflict they're like that's not who you are we could tell that in that like you being in that relationship it was you putting your head down a lot and avoiding avoid avoiding any type of conflict so what when about did you realize that you're being controlled and that's not what you want to do if that's what happened when i was genuinely uh interested in something or if i were if i big thing was through comedy i know i can have a controversial sense of comedy every once in a while but when it was more so when i would find something funny and then i'd have to have a sit down lecture about how i'm wrong and bad for assuming something's funny so it wasn't even a, a discussion it was a finger in the face bah, how dare you how dare you how dare you and i'm like so from what i've known you for you are not the person to take that type of attitude lightly um is was she the reason that you learned yeah. to become who you are today yeah because my my biggest thing 
is, and I harbor no ill will towards past relationship. I, I feel like, obviously, if I could go back in time, I would be like, you know what, I probably won't go through it. But because that type of technology doesn't exist, I, I'm happy that I am who I am now. Technology to go back in time. Yeah, I'm happy there's no technology to go back in time. Okay, okay. okay, okay. <laughs> because I, the most important lesson that I learned from that is don't let people walk over you. Okay. Don't let people sort of put a stomp on who you are as a person just because it doesn't please them. Because it goes back to the loneliness. Because if they're trying to stop who you are trying to be authentically you don't have to have a person in your life there's no there's no obligation to have people in your life so going back to our tender time according to your relationship you told me you were cheated on twice yeah yeah um do you believe that cheating hurts a person in a relationship or should it hurt if they've slept with 100 people before and they are in a relationship with you and they sleep with another one do you believe that it should hurt you i believe that it's going to hurt no matter what how much it hurts you is on you because for me how i view it at this point is that if i get cheated on yeah i'm gonna hurt i'm gonna get hurt because i don't want that to happen that's still a betrayal of my trust i don't think anyone in the world likes their trust betrayed, right? But at this point of who I am, if I get cheated on, of course it's gonna hurt, but I just tell you to leave, get out of my life. And I go back to being who I was, right? So how, after being cheated on, how did that change you as a person? So my issue with it was that I, when it first happened was that I didn't know when to let go. It was a whole convoluted situation at the first time. It was a very, um, I guess, a uh, there were no straight facts, except just one fact was true, was that I got cheated on, right? I'm not sure how personal I want to get about it, but just the one true fact was that I was cheated on. All the semantics and all the bureaucracy was just conjecture as to why I stayed right the biggest thing was I just didn't know when to let go I just didn't know when to cut my losses and be like you know what this is too much hassle for me this is too much mental strain to put up with that I just need to get out of here and you still miss her no absolutely not it's I because I learned to just be by myself and for me, I would rather be by myself than have to be with that, right? Like have to be in, like, not that to paint her as some sort of it monster type thing, but have to be in that relationship. I would rather be by myself because I know that I'm fine with it. And I think that's the main thing that people need to learn is that being by yourself and being okay with it not saying you have to thrive in it, not saying that you would have to prefer being alone, but I, to, be, to see being alone as not a negative for yourself. Because if you see being by yourself as a negative outcome for you, it can make you cling on to relationships that are just doing nothing but harm you. That you they're doing nothing but draining you mentally and destroying who you are as a person but if you see being by yourself as something that is not that bad then it'll be a lot easier to see these signs these signs in a relationship that okay i need to get out of here you're not you're not making me happy you're doing everything negative to me towards me that i don't need you around because hey if you're gone nothing bad happens if anything it's only better now because the only thing that makes people want to stay in bad relationships, uh, and I'm just talking about ones where you don't have to fear for your life, right? That's completely different. But the reason why people stay in bad relationships is because they want 
the human contact regardless of the price regardless of if it's true love like actual love or if it's just i'll hang out with you and i'll touch you every now and again but there's really nothing sincere going on there or there's no benefit for both of us do you think there is a lot of relationships uh, in today today's day and age where this touch you just once in a while pay your bills and hang around you for whatever period of time you agree to hang around with me do they uh, or have they uh, do you see them in large numbers yeah i think more people now in their relationships are like i said they're just desperate to fill a void they're desperate to make sure that um regardless by any means necessary i shouldn't be by myself like um for example like i know so many people who are older like people who are in their 40s and everything they say like oh i need to be married and i need to uh i need to have kids and everything like that like i shouldn't be single by the time i'm like 47 and i say to them I'm like why My, and that question always stumps them is because they never actually really thought about why why do you need a relationship why do you need like for guys why do you need a wife and kids like at, at this age right now or your life isn't or your life isn't complete because perhaps they're ashamed for not having a wife and kids right well i i can see if you want like i i, I guess we should leave kids out of it because uh, that, i think that's a different uh, sort of drive in general like some people want to just see their offspring in the world they want to raise right, right. it but for a wife if, like say someone who just wants a wife why why do you want if you're shamed about it why you should what shame is there maybe you just haven't found a good person or you would rather just be by yourself you're content in your in being by yourself i think being by yourself is better than grabbing on to end the first relationship to come around regardless yeah, yeah, of, of course, the quality mostly probably it's because it's a new concept um the homosexuality is okay recently uh, and back in the days men were shamed for being gay if they didn't have a wife right so maybe that thought process is continuing to oh that they're afraid that they'll be seen as gay yeah if they don't have a wife they'll be considered gay or something who cares uh, that's yeah. what the, my, my thing is who cares it's, I, a, it's not a big deal today right but yeah. back in those days well i i remember back when i was 15 16 i didn't have a girlfriend i had no girl like i didn't have a phone full of girls that i just pull out and be like I'm a yeah but you weren't 47 either right? but here's the, here's the thing is yeah. my stepdad i remember him specifically he was like he was like what are you doing tonight and i'm like nothing just sitting around he's like well you haven't he's like you talked to any girls i'm like no he's like are you interested in any girls and i'm like none of them really catch my eye no not really none of them are really wowing me yeah. at all and he said the same thing to me he's like are you gay like he, he actually sat there he's he questioned me not a passing remark but he's like i think you're gay <laughs> um, i don't think so man i don't think that's the truth i i think that and i don't care right i'm not if i care i'll be like no not gay actually like this girl's hot and this girl's hot but because i'm secure in, in who i am as as a person i don't care what you think of me i know what's the truth i know what the truth is of, my, of myself good man right so the the main mess like the main message is learn to be alone because uh hatred or i guess disdain for loneliness breeds desperation mm -hmm. and desperation breeds toxic or a uh, draining relationship on your end like i i have this one friend who uh told me that she she's never been single and not in the fact that she's been with a guy for her entire life but because she would get with a guy they'd break up two weeks later she'd get with another guy and then she break up with them and then uh, time, blah, 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 right? So on. Yeah, at so least she's not doing the monkey patching. <laughs> yeah, at least that. But she would always be in a relationship 
And I asked her what, straight up one time, and I said to her, I was like, why? And she's like, because it's better than being alone. And, I, and that's what made me ask is why? Why, is, why are, is going from failed relationship to failed relationship? And these weren't happy relationships. Sure, some of them weren't catastrophically awful, but they weren't terrific. They are always not great. So I said, I'm like, how is it that these, these mediocre to bad relationships constantly is better than just hanging out by yourself? How is that, how is that worse? How, how, how is the idea of that worse? What did she say? And she said, because there, the, I, like, there needs to be some sort of physical contact. I need physical contact and I said to I thought to myself well wouldn't it make it more worth it and more rewarding to suck it up be by yourself uh, I said wouldn't you feel better not having that like urge that I need to get that, to be with someone I need to snuggle with someone I need it I can't function without it right wouldn't it be better to live without that? And she agreed. She's like, yeah, that would probably be a lot better than that. So I said, I'm like, take this time. Because she's, we were talking just as she exited a relationship. I said, take this time. Be by yourself. I said, this is my challenge to you. Is be by yourself. Don't try. Don't even flirt with guys. Don't set up any prospects with them. Just be by yourself. And she did that for about six months. Wow. And after that happened, she met a guy. And now they're still together. This is like two years ago now almost. And she said this is probably the best relationship she's ever been in. And I said because there's no desperation involved in the relationship. There's no I need you in this relationship. It's solely I want you which is a massive difference in relationships. I need you uh, implies dependence. It yeah. implies that my life wasn't complete without you, it, which is all very sentimental, ooey gooey things to say to your partner. Like, oh, I need, I, my life wasn't complete. You complete me, ha, huh, and everything like that. But they should just stay as ooey gooey sentiment. It should not be genuine truth. Your partner should not be the reason your life is complete. Your partner should make you feel like you have a bonus on your life, that you, that you have the cake made and they're now the cherry, right? That's mm. how it should that's yes. how your partner should be. So. <laughs> so so that's your conclusion of what a romantic relationship is or should be. Yes, that with uh you should not go into any relationship with desperation learn to be on your own learn to be okay on your own and you will find yourself and also search for genuine relationship don't go through the tinder don't go through the hookup culture go through old means of of relating connecting to people yeah person. connect connecting with another person because the biggest thing that people have forgotten is that genuine connection is what keeps a relationship going. Not, uh, hey, I like your face. <laughs> yeah. I guess within that regard, the pro approach, approach anxiety comes into the play and uh, selecting quality uh, candidates for your relationships. Uh, approach is absolutely necessary without tender. What do you think about that? Approach is necessary without Tinder? Yeah, because if, you're, if, you, if you need a, a number of prospects in your roster to be able to select the best one out of them, which is hypergamy, um, to, to know what the prospects uh, hold for you, um, don't you think the approach anxiety needs to be dealt with uh, in that regard? Yeah, well, I think I'm spe like... Uh... I think I can't relate to fully what you're talking about because I'm not really the type to have a full roster, right? Usually how I, how I am personally. And I guess this is ty a type of anomaly because every single time I mention this to somebody, they're like, what? What? That makes no sense. But when I'm interested in a person, 
that is the only person that I'm interested in that time. Until whatever, what like. So the, you don't believe in having the roster. You yeah. just believe in like simple, straightforward relationship. You see a person, if you like them, you try your best to stay as close to them as possible, and hopefully the relationship continues to become deeper and deeper eventually. Yeah, I think that well, you have to. You can't force a relationship. Like, obviously, you could only go off of if you're going in real life. I'm not. I'm not even going to touch on online, but if you're going in real life, the only thing you have to go off of is someone's looks. Right. You can't go like. You can't just look at them from far away and they're like. Yeah, I bet that person has good morals. I can see it. <laughs> I can see it. I can see their morals before I even saw their face. I yeah, saw. Yeah, I yeah. saw their prospects. I saw. Yeah. I, I saw their uh, their their drive before I even yeah. saw their face. You could only go off of. You could only go off of someone's looks to start off with. Sounds good, my friend. But, Sounds good. And uh, yes, uh, that's that's it. Thank you so much, Caleb. It was good discussion about what the romantic relationship is. Great yeah. perspective, great chat. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, we'll uh, talk about another topic in another video. I hope so. Thank you for uh, talking to me today. Anytime, and, uh, anytime. And we'll talk again. All right. Have a good day, my you friend. You too. Okay. <laughs>